What's up, everyone? <laughs> you did that. That was your fault. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Meta Contexts. We are your hosts. I'm Graham McCarthy, uh, CTO and co-founder of Soapbox. With me, as always, is my wonderful guest and actual host of the show, Brennan McEachern, CEO and co-founder of Soapbox. Today, we have a jam-packed meeting. It's always fun to start your Mondays with a lot of context. So without further ado, let's jump into the Meta Context. Let's start with metrics. Let's open it up. Well, there's a couple of things I think that are making us upset. Um, some of them don't even make it onto the, the slides. MRR stagnant. That's why I'm upset. <laughs> that's yeah. made the it No, it, it has been stagnant. I think, are, what are we doing to Im- improve it? Certainly we're making a change on the process. So I'm going to send out by Wednesday, I'm going to send out probably 300, 400 emails to get meetings. So that's me doing it now. I'm not relying on anyone else to do it. If MRR goes up and mm-hmm. the, the week's following, great. Problem solved. And you go back to sales and you just become the main sales guy again. That's right. That's totally fine. Monthly active users, I think we're getting to where we should have, like where we know we are. Mm -hmm. So I'm not particularly, like this is good growth, but I'm not particularly inspired. Hey, percent month over month growth in in MAU, but. I don't think, I think it's going to plateau again at some point, like probably soon. I know it is up this week from last week, or sorry, it is up last week from the week previous. Yeah. I don't think it's going to bust past. Not without any kind of significant change in the platform or yeah. some marketing campaign or a new integration, yeah. which we have not, nothing on the horizon for. So This doesn't look so hot. Oh, dude, I don't know how to interpret some of this data now. Now I'm like, I'm like really into like what, what's going on. I mean, we hit like a pretty decent high on activated logos, which is like counter to my thought of what our app is doing right now, right? Like we've been thinking about some of these things and I'm like, oh, our app feels buggy and slow and MPS is down and all this stuff. But then wait a second, our activation rates are h- highest they've been. That's interesting. Why is that happening? The only thing I can think of is we're targeting better people, right? So we've dropped AppSumo. Mm. We're not quite down this week, but we're down theoretically on MS Teams. And we're up on web. So we're up on mm-hmm. web, which we, we believe anyways is like the high, the good channel. I mean, what's good about MS Teams is the people who do use it and like it pay more so than people on, on the website. So there's benefits there. Just you get more uh, shit kickers going through that channel. So I think you're right. I think focusing on web is probably the best thing we should be doing. Why do you think they pay more? I think it's the type of user. They're used to yeah. paying for apps. Everything you subscribe to for your business, you're going to have to pay for. Whereas people who use Google accounts typically get stuff for free. So they're trying out of things like the fact that Gmail is basically free is yeah. is kind of amazing. Like it's mm-hmm. so many free tools out there. Yes, you're giving up your privacy and your data, and that's why that's why it's free. But the end user doesn't realize that, so um, they expect it to just be like a free app. So they they come at it with that approach where they're just trying it out. Maybe they're trying it out. Maybe they're not. Okay, but then here's counter to the counter, right? So we go to final week of trial. Counter to the we counter. Dipped. We dipped. We dipped on both. We dipped on new customers. We dipped, yeah, on, dipped, dipped on both. On the final week, active. Terrible. It's, good. it's terrible. Dude, it's terrible. It's terrible. And it's like, we're at the point where it's like, oh, we can blame it on summer. But like, there is more than six people in the world working hard right now. Yeah. You yeah, can't agreed. really. You're given a free trial immediately. So you have two weeks to try out the full functionality. As soon as you lose access, you're still using Soapbox. So you should want to upgrade. Or don't use the free app. And the free app is full functioned. Yeah, it is hard to purchase. Um, easy to purchase, but hard. To, you shouldn't have to go through a lot of hoops to do it. So then you're churning, you're downgrading because no one's using it. Mm-hmm. So we have an adoption problem or an engagement retention issue. So maybe we actually are like, I look at these, some of these numbers and I go, oh, our activation sucks. Our activation sucks. Our activation sucks. But what if like, I reframe that and say, hey, our activation's fine because we have enough people who want to extend their trial. I'm still bullish on what we're doing and like how we're doing the right things. It's just I'm seeing like everything drop because we're so focused on what's going to happen two to three months from now. It is better to take the hit now, yes. I'm wondering if there's ways to make some minor adjustments within the time period now, like not delay the big projects we're working on for next month, but can we just tack on a couple growth hacks or something to just like 
shore up some of these issues. Unless we actively seek out the people who are happy, they're not going to write it to support and say, I am 100% satisfied with your service. Thank you for being it. <laughs> yeah. Around. Have you ever sent a message like that to Never. anyone? Never. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. Even no. the things I'm 100% satisfied with. Yeah. And I'm talking to them for support. I still won't say it because there's still tiny things that I'm annoyed by and things I'm perfectly yeah. satisfied with. Um, all right, let's check out your tweets. <laughs> let's keep this party rolling because well, otherwise okay. we'll run out of time. Graham's got a tweet about onboarding. He's been onboarding people on the engineering team. He's oh, got a template. Got he grow. invented it. He may or may not have invented it. We don't remember. <laughs> we we can't remember the origin story of where this, this template came from. That's right. But we were we involved, though. <laughs> for some sure degree, somewhere part of the process it had emojis in it so we were there yeah. what yes. what's what works about it what works about it what i like about the template is i give it to my engineering managers and they roll it with their teams so it ensures that everyone gets the same level of onboarding it's got a list of all the stuff you need to do on from an hr perspective so getting your payroll stuff sorted getting your, getting your benefits sorted uh, making sure you go through the proper background checks and because the app is soapbox you're able to assign people to next steps and have due dates so and our entire team obviously use our own app so mm -hmm. everyone knows they, they see the things pop in so everyone's accountable to the appropriate part where they can influence so that's awesome there's a section for your desk setup and making sure you get swag uh, delivered to you so I think that's helpful for employees to know that yes I'm going to get a laptop I'm going to get this nice little mm -hmm. swag package from the CEO it's a big deal there's even a check in there to make sure their home set up and their internet's nice and they're comfortable they don't need a standing desk or they have a, a decent chair so I think it's just it goes the extra mile and it's not that each individual manager has gone in and done that it's just they use the template and out of the box this all happens the main benefit I think is the comfort the comfort I have knowing each employee is going to get the same experience depending on no matter who the manager is I think that's my main thing. Plus, my managers aren't wasting their time like making their own template to make sure that they've included all the different things they're supposed mm -hmm. to include. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a bit of standardization. I'd say like 10% standardization, 90% um, employee onboarding experience. It just There's a lot of headaches that are just removed because it's all there in the document. Yeah. It's yeah. a living document, so it does change as we evolve the business. So it does have to be kept up to date, but that's, that's on us. That's on me. That's on anyone, whoever onboards the next person then makes those tweaks and then you better. apply them back to the template. Exactly. So do you think this onboarding template should be owned by HR? No, definitely not. Um, no, why? I th well, typically so, you would say employee onboarding is like an HR function, right? Typically you would say it's on because I think that puts the onus on the wrong person. They're not really responsible for the human. Like they are, they are HR human resources, mm -hmm. but I think it's the manager is, is, solely re like responsible for their onboarding their employee into the organization. I think that's the change that should happen. Yes, you're coming into the company. The company is bigger than the team that you join. But that manager and you, that's the relationship that you're forming. That's that bond. So you mm -hmm. want that to be as strong as possible. So I think mm -hmm. putting the onus on the, in the hiring manager to make sure they have all the tools to make that employee successful makes the right alignment between the manager and employee. And then yeah. it keeps the manager accountable to the onboarding. So then they have to make sure they're doing it properly and then like send that upstream. So I think sure HR can have an aspect of it. That's yeah. like, they can weigh in on, Hey, maybe you should use this language. Maybe you should include these things that we want from an HR perspective. Or but we'll take, they're... we'll take mm -hmm. the swag. We'll ship. Swag. Exactly. Yeah. So then they're accountable to the swag item, but it's still the manager who's, who's facilitating the process. Yeah. Your tweet Load it up. Um, My tweet Load it up. Other than, will... other than I should proofread before tweeting. Which I already know about, but yeah, I, I don't wasn't going to comment on it. I was going to let that go. Purpose, I don't. Okay, because then I'll true. never tweet. I missed. You couple. missed a couple words, so I'm going to read it now, and we'll see if I can replace the words without messing it up. So, two managers of people who actually do tasks slash creative work as their job, you're driving them nuts. Which is why it's easier for them and worse for you now that they're remote. Here are some tips to make everything feel great again. There is some really solid content in here. So I would love to talk to you. Uh, why'd you post this and talk through some of the, the tips? Well, okay, so a couple of them. Makers versus managers. I think about that all the time. Um, being someone yeah, Can you explain who, what that means? Yeah, so the, the idea is there's two types of schedules. There's a manager schedule um, and there's a, a maker schedule. For the most part, we're building an app for manager schedule, right? Like people mm -hmm. who are in meetings a lot, whose work happens in meetings. When we talk about holding people accountable, that's likely happening in a meeting. For a lot of other people, devs, that's not true. Meetings are the bane of their existence. They feel unproductive in a meeting. They lose their tra train of thought in meetings. They don't get to do work because of meetings. 
And often if you show up at 9 a.m. and you get a meeting at 10, you're like, oh, I can't even get, I can't even make enough progress in an hour mm -hmm. for it to be worth me starting. So therefore I'm kind of going to just like loaf. And that's not to blame on them. Like some people would be like, oh, you've got to manage them like stricter or whatever. Like that's not true. Yeah. It's like it, it takes them 20 minutes to understand what the problem is. Probably another 20 minutes to get deep enough into the core of the files and, and concepts and build a mental model to actually start doing open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And then right when they're doing open heart surgery, you're going to pull them out and be like, hey, let's talk about our feelings about something else. It's a waste of time. So we have a thing called Wired in Wednesday where there are no meetings. And then we have a little bit like it, it ebbs and flows a little bit depending on the role. But um, for the most part, that's like your sacred day to do work. I know you appreciate that day, especially when it's free. Day. You it love that day. favorite day. Yeah, I get so Everyone mad when there's any it. meeting on that day. Like, it doesn't like, matter if it's in the afternoon, near the end of the day. It's like that ruins it because why? it's no longer wired in Wednesday. Because I have, I have that mental model I'm building, but in the background, I'm thinking about that meeting. I'm like, okay, I can't get too attached to this because I do have that meeting at 4 p.m. So I yeah. know I'm going to be pulled out. So I, I better get as far as I can or do the tasks, not the hard tasks. Just the ones I know I'll get done before that time. Yeah, like there are times where I even will set an alarm on my phone. I'm like, oh, okay, that meeting's in like two and a half hours and I'm going to try to do something pretty hard and creative. Two and a half hour thing. And then then I know I don't, I'm don't. i not going to show up 30 minutes late to it because I'm like knee deep in a problem right and in. forgotten time. Yeah. The beginning of the day is probably the best time to have your meetings because that's your only real time where you know they're starting their day around nine probably maybe nine yeah. thirty maybe ten depending on if they're engineers or what coast they're on no it is tough i'm looking at one of my employees calendars here and like it's so freeing to see this calendar it's like oh there's no meetings it's so good uh we use this a lot so 10 50 99 you know i think about this a lot when i'm giving feedback on people's work it's just this balance between no it's just this balance between like done is better than perfect yeah but obviously yep. perfect is better than done and so you have to find a perfect is perfect by definition and you want things to be good uh how do you figure it out and i think the answer is just more feedback through out the process yep. really and hard the, with junior employees and the right feedback at the right time from the right level of person giving that yep. feedback hence the 1050 approach yeah and so when you get someone who's doing who wants to impress like new employees or you want are you doing something like someone who's never done a particular role before and they maybe want to like show you that they can do it they'll go and try to they'll like oh let me let me build this thing out that's it's going to be great and then you see it and you're like this is upside down right this is backwards this is crazy you don't you wouldn't want to give feedback on someone's spike when they're like two weeks into building that project like if you give feedback on the spike for engineering work they're gonna have to delete the whole thing and start again exactly. and that's going to piss everyone off and so it's kind of just this framework to say you invite me in here, I'll not be a mean person and give you the appropriate level of feedback. What I love about this from our perspective is that um, when you're like when you're involved for specific language lines or like specific nuance in how we, we do things, it doesn't really matter when you're giving structural feedback or like the wireframe stage feedback. You're not talking about, oh, here's the color palette you should be using. Here's the, the different mm -hmm. uh, shadows you want in the background. I think that's helpful because you're not wasting cycles on that when you're reviewing it. You're focusing on like, are these the right concepts? Should we even have this feature? Uh, outputs versus outcomes. We got into a, re I think a really good. We get into a really good pattern this when we talk about like squads uh, on our team and giving them uh, out, like the outcome we want. Hey, here's the the activation rates, or here's the revenue rates, or here's whatever the conversion rates we want. Like figure it out. We are definitely focused more on the outcomes versus what they're doing to achieve those outcomes. But I think mm -hmm. it also gives you an opportunity because if you do want to weigh in on on what the input or the output is, um, you say, here's the outcome I want to achieve. I want to have like increase acquisition by 10%. And here's three projects I think will actually hit that goal. Bam, bam, bam. Let's have a conversation. Disagree with me or like, or give me better ideas because I I just want to hit that output. How we get there, I'm op open to. But this is what this is how you still influence it as like like a manager or as like a, a senior leader. You just give them here's the goal and here's some things I think we should do to hit that goal. This is the metric I care about. Every single time I talk to you, it's only going to be about progress towards that metric. I don't really care how you do it, but I'm here as like a resource if you need me. You know, mm -hmm. go get it done. Then you either have the right people or the wrong people. If you have the wrong people, you're gonna be thinking about yeah. how do I get the right people for eight hours a day. It didn't land. It didn't land on Twitter, dude. You know I what? Know. I'm gonna give you a like right now. Boom. Earn those likes one by one. That's it. One by one. 
have a conversation like this every single time and you'll get to maybe 10. Uh, okay, let's let's dive into constructive feedback. That was included uh, in there and I linked to a blog post. This is the toughest mm. one and I don't think anyone ever really gets good at this, but it is constructive feedback. Um, the quote that people that you've probably heard a million times, praise in public, criticize in private. Easy to do, super fun, everyone likes to do it, everyone likes to receive it, no problem. The criticize in private part, the like second half of that sentence probably doesn't happen as much, much as it does. It can be hard to do. When you give feedback, you're either too soft or you're too harsh. If you don't know which one you are, you're too harsh. If you're too soft, you know you're too soft. You're like, mm, I kind of like, I kind of like yeah. sheepishly talked around it there. And you're like, oh, I hope it landed. Did it land? If someone pushes you on it, you're going to be like, I probably could have been more direct. This piece of feedback, basically there's four steps. Um, to uh, the scientific approach to uh, giving constructive feedback. So first, the micro yes. So um, that's basically asking a short but important yes or no question to start off the conversation. It basically um, lets the team know that feedback is on its way. And it also gives the opportunity to buy into the conversation that's about to happen. So for example, the example that was given on our, our blog post here, can we talk about your workload and how you've managed it? They know something is, is afoot. Something, something went wrong and I have to now hear about what went wrong. But they're opting in, so they can. They're go, opting in. Yeah, they say yeah. yes or not right now. Let's do it in thirty minutes, or let's do it tomorrow. So at least they can set the expectations of when they're going to get that feedback. And then that gives them an easy out without saying never's a good time. You kind of exactly. you have yeah. a window of opportunity where they can mentally yeah. prepare for like. Can you imagine someone period. saying never? Well, they just wouldn't get hired here, right? It'd be like you That's are not true. coachable. But yeah. yeah, I mean, otherwise, if you said that, you'd be like never. Okay. I think that's. Can I give you another piece of feedback right now? (laughs) Exactly. It's like. "Hmm." Okay, so the specific part. I think it's hard. So yeah, I think well. So the 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 video that the the blog post is about talks about the blur words, which is basically Uh all the things the person's doing that warrants the constructive feedback that's coming towards them. Don't use vague words like "Oh, you've been late frequently" or "Hey, your work on this was subpar." Is something going on? It's it's being very specific. Of "Hey, last Thursday you should have played to this meeting." And the previous Thursday, you also should have linked to the same meeting. Is something happening that we should talk about because your your tardiness is affecting your productivity or something like that? The, the I think the worst thing you want to do in this situation is is for someone to say, "Oh, can you be more specific?" Because the specificity mm-hmm. helps me like orient my thoughts on what I can actually do to improve it. Um, and then you're like, "Oh, uh, well, um, yeah." And then the feedback's not going to land. You, you shouldn't go in there with like a piece of paper and you just read off, here is my critical feedback for you in very specific detail, but definitely document the notes so you have them. It's also helpful if you do have to go into a performance improvement plan later down the road. So having mm-hmm. that, these like four or five things, maybe it's a yep. link to a Slack chat if it's a remote team or a link to yep. some GitHub posts if you guys use some sort of social coding that's an engineer yep. you're talking to. Yeah, it's just one to three bullet points. Like, you know, we all learned it in whatever grades, like who, what, when, where, why, how, or whatever, right? Like just know the basics. Yeah. So I think the impact piece to me is, is it's like this answering the so what, right? Like, yeah, your, your progress report was a day late. If you leave it there, then you kind of become this like, you know, this guy's on my ass. Yeah, the, the show impact section, this is the why it matters. So yeah. you were late, here's why. Your test case coverage wasn't good enough, here's why it matters. But trying to, this creates the empathy with, with the, the person you're giving feedback to, to, to tap into their humanity as to what's the impact of their... Uh, indecision or, or their poor, poor decision making. I think that helps you transition out of that and then you can kind of make it into more of a conversation which is to ask a question, right? Like, Yeah, exactly. You're looking to call out a problem, address it, give them ideally ways to fix it and then make sure they're okay because yeah. they could have taken this not in a nice way. So it's good to... They're also, it's it's almost like in a movie where the, something big happens and it's like that high-pitched screaming noise. You're like, uh-oh, like did a grenade go off or whatever and no one can hear? Like sometimes when people are mm. faced with what feels like to them confrontation, their fight or flight goes off and they don't listen. And you and I have experienced that. We've been mm-hmm. experienced oh, yeah. it where like we, we talk for, uh, we, we said something to someone and we talked for about another five minutes to say, can you just repeat it all? Because I I don't remember anything you just said. And so the questions are, are helpful in even just having that person repeat it, right? Like A, switching quickly into operationally, like how do we fix this? Um, let's come up with ways to fix it together. But then also like reflect it back to me. Like, are you interpreting it the same way that I'm interpreting it? Do you have any questions about it? Or, you know, what did I, did I choose my words wrongly? Um, did I, mm-hmm. you know, get it across right? Okay, nowhere is this harder than the BO conversation. You ever do the BO conversation? What's the BO conversation? 
like someone's like bo in office oh i don't yeah. even know man this is tough this is a tough it's one a t- it's, How the, do you it's the hardest it? one so I, so i think one. like the i think the easiest what? way to do it personal hygiene, personal hygiene that's hygiene. the word personal yeah. hygiene hygiene it's but then that's hygiene. still that's stuff because like they might the hard part about all of these things is they are people are finding you unpleasant people are around. finding you unpleasant and yep. so that's what makes it so awkward and so I think I think like tip one is like just just get it out of that day and almost be mm-hmm. like take take the hit for the team only because I've had to deal with this in the past I just want to get it you know even if you're lying there like only because yeah. I've had to deal with this in the past and I don't want this to become an issue the worst thing you want to do in this situation when you get into the get specific is you're like listen I talked to Bob I talked to Sally I talked to Sue yeah. and I talked to and they all think you stink that that's like the lettuce and the teeth conversation and mm-hmm. yeah. and and do it both ways it's like listen. In order for me to do my job properly, if I go into a meeting and I have lettuce in my teeth, I need you to tell me. I need you to be yeah. like Brennan. You have lettuce in your teeth. You look stupid. I need if if you don't do it. To, if you don't share that with me, then I'm more embarrassed. I need you to do it. Please do it. You're doing me a disservice. You're a bad person if you don't tell me yeah. that stuff. Right? It's like all right. Let's shake on it. Let's make a pact. If we ever have lettuce in the teeth or something similar, mm-hmm. booger in the um, nose. Booger in the nose. Bo. We forget yeah. whatever. I, I got your back. I'll, I'll I'll back you up. I'll help you out. The micro yes goes from like, hey, can we talk about like just personal hygiene for a second, which is <laughs> fucking awkward. To yeah. hey, remember we made that pact on like your first week about the lettuce on the teeth. I have a thing. You okay to talk about it right now? And then that mm. all of a sudden because I'm being a good person. Yeah. And you're being a good person. You immediately know what it is, and you know it's coming from a, a place of like a place care of trust and, yeah. and not a place of like being a dick lettuce and teeth for a second right now if we do something in this episode that sucks or is annoying or is terrible there's a little thing called comments and i want you to be as rude as possible and just tell us what we're doing wrong what you want to see more of or whatever and uh we'll take it we'll eat it that's our goal we'll eat that lettuce you bet that's it i need it i need nutrients (laughs) (laughs) awesome this has been another great episode of meta context Thanks for watching. See you next time.